Uh, welcome back from the short break. Uh, our next talk is by Alex Paul Gonzalez. Um, it's on a laptop by KD. How does KD conceive a dis device? All right. So, well, thanks again for putting up with me once more. Um, and, well, while I'm repeating, I'm still going to, to introduce myself because while well, this presentation is going to be possibly the weirdest presentation I've ever done, I've always been talking about code and programs and executing applications and, uh, well, Android and KDevelop and stuff like that. This time we're going to talk about hardware, which is a subject that, well, us in KD we don't know a lot about and, well, me myself, I don't know a lot about either. But, um, well, I'm super happy to be here and to be talking about that. Um, in general, in KD, we do make, uh, we, we make software, right? We, we, we program, we, we think a lot about how people are going to use our software, and we, well, try to make everything very flexible. But then in the end, we make software, right? And our software, without any exception, needs to be running on, on hardware. So I'm really, really sure that all of you in your trajectory in KDE, you've faced this, uh, well, awkward conversation where people are telling you, um, so I hear that you work on this Linux thing, this KDE thing. Well, what should I buy? I want to use it, this thing. Uh, in the beginning, I had these kind of questions from my family and my friends and well, while you can always say, well, you just buy anything because Linux works everywhere, it's amazing, it's brilliant. Um, well, you still have are telling them, well, to wipe, wipe their operating system, to wipe via what the provider they bought their laptop from, well, worked on putting there and, and, and well, change it into something that, well, me and I, another group of geeks have been working on. Admittedly, thousands and thousands of gigs, but still gigs on, on, on our what, free time or professional time. Um, but in general, we need to have something that, um, that we can tell people to use, to, to, to love, and to embrace. And at the same time, we need to get closer to the users. Uh, like I said on my other presentation, if you were there, one, one of the specific problems that I've, I've detected since I've been working in KD is that we are a bit far away from our users sometimes. We need to uh, strengthen this, this, this feedback loop to make sure that if there's an issue, uh, they can get back at us and that when, when we provide something that they can leverage it as soon as possible. And well, this kind of ties to uh, well, this project I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about which is, which is uh, what we ended up calling the KDE Slimbook. So here, you know about KDE maybe, you know about Slimbook because, well, we announced this months ago, but for those of you who don't, I'm going to give a bit of an idea of the, how the story went and how we ended up here with me talking about this weird, weird project. So it, everything started with Baltasar, who is a very stubborn person, and, well, he needed a laptop, he doesn't consider himself a developer or even a very tech-savvy person, and he found this, this company who was actually, is founded very um, near where he is from. And, well, they were selling Linux laptops, so it was, well, kind of related to uh, what I was saying before. He was asking for a really long time, how do I do to well, get uh, the, this KD you, you guys are doing on my laptop. It's not that he didn't know the answer, right? He already had a blog for years about KD. He had been reviewing our applications, but he clearly knew that it was, it was too complex and that it was awkward to, to get a, a laptop with an operating system to wipe. So, well, he fell in love with the, with the product and, and started to poke me about it. But to be honest, I didn't really do much about it at, at, at the time because, well, it was too early. I, I, I always need like a couple of months to be convinced on, on something. Then I start pushing it like a maniac, but I need a couple of months. And it was uh, Academy EAS in 2016 when uh, it was in Madrid. Uh, 
And Baltasar, because he's very stubborn, he dragged Alejandro to, to, join, to join the Academy ES where he had a presentation. Alejandro is the slim book guy, as I usually call him when I talk to you guys. And well, he started showing us um, well, the, the laptops that they're selling and telling us about how and why they, they love Linux, making products with it, and so on and so forth. And at that point, we started talking about how we could, um, well, they were actually dis discussing whether it would make sense to have um, Slimbook laptops uh, shipping Neon by default. And, and at that point, well, I mean, they could install Neon if they wanted because, well, Neon is free for anyone to use, so, I mean, we don't even need to give them permission or anything like that, right? But uh, it, feel, it felt like too easy and too short and narrow-minded, well, what we could achieve. And well, to be honest, it's, uh, it was some, something that we have discussed uh, with many members in KD Spain from long ago, especially Alex, where we were talking about how, for example, it's really cool how Apple can very well integrate with the, with the hardware they make because, well, they know what hardware is, is going to, to be there, and we never have had this, this, this opportunity. And, well, we had some um, people interested in, in us using their hardware and give it, giving it some love. So it was food for, for thought, at, at least. And it wasn't until Academy 2016 when we gathered again where... Um, well, I sat down with Jens and, and Thomas, and we had a, very, well, a set of very long conversations about whether it would make sense to make such a project, where it would, whether it would make sense to like, put a lot of or some effort into, into having such product happening. Actually, one of my, my, my concerns in the, in, the, in the beginning was that we would well, announce it, and maybe it wouldn't be a big deal, so I actually wanted at least to have some kind of consensus with my friends and not be working alone on it because it wouldn't have sucked. Which is, well, also kind of a reason for doing things in KDE, right? Like you can always work from home alone, but if you don't want to work from home alone, well, KDE is a place for doing it. In any case, at that point we started discussing what we wanted, what was the, the kind of thing we could offer with, well, a reasonable am amount of, of, of work and that could be directly be useful to both our, well, directly our users and to, to communicate the KDE values and, uh, well, the Plasma features, right? So we started working on it. That was after uh, KubeCon, of course. Maybe it was between September and December. And when we knew what we wanted, we started talking about distributions. And as you know, at, uh, at the moment, we've uh, only been uh, offering, or Slimbook has only been offering uh, the, the KD Slimbook with, with Neon. Uh, we talked about, uh, about this subject with many distributions. Actually, it was kind of the, the intention to see if it would be possible to work with others. But we still didn't want to lose the, the grip of making sure that, the, that if our KDE developer may, uh, submitted a fix, uh, submitted a new version of, of some software, this, this software would get into, the, into the, the, the devices that the users are using, which is kind of, I would say, the whole point of having a, a device that is provided by KDE. If KDE is providing some kind of quality, this quality should be on the user's computers. It shouldn't be sitting on a Git repository waiting for it to be packaged or waiting for a release cycle to arrive because our release cycle is our release cycle. And well, it's the best we, we got, at least at the moment. But then uh, as soon as all of this was decided, we worked on the, on the website. Actually, if you think about it, uh, well, this website and the uh, dot news was mostly what, what we did. So uh, this website was mostly Jens's work. He uh, well, did all, most of the text and all, all of the graphics. And well, if you, if you go through it um, beyond the KDS Slimbook uh, anecdote, if you want, you can see a, a little bit the, the kind of things we were thinking about that uh, the kind of things we believe that are useful and beneficial about Plasma, and the reason why we think that, that people should be purchasing uh, products that are powered by, 
well, not only by Plasma or, or KDE software, but by free software and open source. And, well, then there was the device. This is uh, one of the specific things about the device is the engraved logo. It's something that we also really kind of wanted. Um, it would have been rather weird if we didn't have our own, well, footprint somehow on the, on, on the device. And well, we got to use this uh, laser engraving. And I think it looks pretty cool. Also, it was done by Jens, of course. I wouldn't have been able to use our logo on a laptop. Um, but I think, I think it looks great. Actually, uh, like this is the, the case that the previous version of the Slimbook was using. The newer version didn't allow for laser engraving, but we actually really, really asked them if we could do something like that because, well, we like putting our logo everywhere. But then the, we wanted to have good coverage. We had the, pro, the, the product more or less defined, ready. We, we had customized it some, somehow. We knew what uh, software we wanted, right? So it was a matter of telling the world about what, what we were about, up to. So, well, first thing, Thomas worked on, on the dot story alone. You, if you go through it, you can, you can also see kind of Thomas's soul in it and all of our, our thoughts at that time. But, um, well, it's kind of related, obviously, to what, what the KDS Slimbook website says. And then we believe that one of the big successes uh, of, of the whole enterprise has been the, the media response. Um, one of the facts is that uh, the most visited news article in the DOT last year was was the, the Slimbook announcement. And well, in fact, not only the dot article was uh, quite widespread at some point, but uh, lots of news sites in, 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 the, well, in the business were also telling about, about the, the project. Uh, it's interesting to see also what kind of things they were, well, putting the, the, the accent on regarding, regarding the project, like, whether it was a Linux uh, laptop itself and how it was a contrast to, a, to Windows. Actually, I, I don't really have this impression that Windows is the laptop thing anymore. Actually, like, lots of people are using Apple, but well, it looks like ZDNet do still have this impression. Um, PC wall, some more local news. Also, the fact that uh, Slimbook is a Spanish company got some special treating by, by Spanish press. Or maybe just because my Google is assuming that since I'm in Spain, I, I look for things in Spanish. Who knows? But in general, it had a, a good deal of localized um, coverage, which is always interesting because we cannot always get ourselves everywhere. And while well, seeing others, while well, being a speaker of our thoughts, it's always nice, right? And in the end, well, the conclusion after this was announced in, in January, I think it was. Let's, let's see if we can see it on, on the dot article. Da, 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 da. It's not, oh uh, yeah, 26 January. And since we've uh, sold 44 devices, well, it's up to you if, uh, to, to decide if it's a lot or not. I believe it's really cool. Actually, it's more devices than we, we've ever sold. So <laughs> it's, it's interesting. Well, technically, it's Slimbook who sold those devices, right? But um, it's, it's been uh, interesting to see people not only interested in using our software, but well, to put their, their bugs and their interest on, on buying something that they're going to be well, using for the next two, three, four years or, or more, right? I don't know how many people, how many years people use our laptops, but I think it's, it's really cool. So. The thing about the conclusions is that I am going to not be giving a lot of, of conclusions just yet. I think that it's, it's uh, well, more than a project in itself, it's, it's been a test by us. It's, it's something that we had never done, and it's something that we should be thinking about whether we want, we would want to do it again, whether, we, whether it was a good idea, and well, whether we should be doing it again, right? So one of the 
things I would ask you to do is to talk to the Slimbook guys. They've been on the on the halls uh, during the whole weekend and well during Academy S as well. I hope all of you have talked to them. And well, before Alejandro is gonna tell us something because yes, 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 you're going to. Thank you. Uh, well, it's a pleasure to be here, uh, being the, able to meet the KD members. We have been talking with for the last few months via email. We are happy to see our customers who bought our laptops a few months ago are still enjoying and use it. The event also, sorry, the event also been a good experience to meet new people who have shown interest on the laptops. KDE is a powerful yet simple desktop that we are proud of offer with our laptop because we think it has a necessary to be used for new Linux users and uh, more advanced developers. KDE, the best part of, of Linux is the, the community and uh, we think, truly believe, that KDE is best one. I hear that they're leaving really soon, so if you have something that you want to tell them, just run to them. There's Alejandro and Cesar, who I believe is still there. You can, you can talk to them. They're really nice people and very passionate about the products. Also, uh, talk to Jens, Harald, Thomas, and Jonathan, and, and myself, who are the people who have been working the most on, on the project. I think that, uh, well, after this, this academy, it will be the right time to start uh, while well, thinking about uh, the, well, what are our own conclusions and what we want to make of, of uh, this well, laptop project, laptop enterprise. So talk to them, give, uh, tell them your feelings, tell, tell us your feelings, and well, there it will be where we will use them to, to make up our minds. And well, from here, thanks to all of them as well for, for all of this work. It's been the not super rewarding work, as in we didn't really know what would happen. But uh, well, in the end, I think it's it's been really fun. We've all learned a lot of it, a lot about well, things that are not software itself, and and well, my personal thanks to you guys. And now, uh, if you have any questions, you can you can tell me, because well, I don't really have anything else more, more specific to say. Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, any, quest any questions? Sorry. Do you have ideas on how to turn that 44 devices into more like 440 or 44,000? So, sorry, again? Do you have ideas on how to turn that 44 devices sold into more, something more like 440 or 4,400? Is that even our job, do you think? Well, there's definitely ways. I mean, more marketing. Um, I don't know, different device, more newer device. There's definitely ideas. The question is whether it's up to us or not, right? It's up to us to make sure that Linux and free software are viable on on personal informatics, right? On, on professional informatics just as well. And we need to make sure that we are capable of being there. That's the main point from my point of view. That doesn't mean that it's our responsibility to actually be the one selling these laptops or actually pushing them. I would be the most honored though if the, all of those 44 million uh, devices are, are running Plasma, KD software, or even free software, right? But we need to make sure that we're doing the best. And actually, this is uh, an enterprise to make sure that we're doing the best and to be able to define, if we're not doing the best, what we should be doing to be doing the best.
How come you are not using one? That's a good question. I, I do have one, um, but I use it for testing mostly. Like uh, one of the, the things we wanted to make sure is that um, when a new customer got one of these laptops, if he had a problem, we would be able to react properly, right? And well, my system setup is crazy, and it's definitely not what we want to put on on um, well a delivered laptop. So I thought it would be fine. Like the, the laptop, I, this little laptop I have, the password is one two three four. If any of you still that, you, you already know the password, right? And the idea is that if somebody finds a problem, I can give it to him and and and, and test it. That doesn't mean I, could, I couldn't have two of them, but well, my budget is limited. We have time for one more question. I, I was just going to ask, do you know what sort of people the, the 44 um, purchases are? Are they developers, for instance? The, 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 there's a similar Dell program, but I think that's really just targeted at um, developers in enterprises. So, have, have the people who bought these KD laptops are they are they developers, software developers, or are they people who are going to uh, just use a word processor, say, because maybe there's much more advantage in it being a developer machine than a yes, thing definitely. for word processing? I don't know. Definitely, and it's actually part of the discussion. Something that I was literally discussing with with Alejandro before is whether yeah. like. Who are these kind of laptops for? Yeah. If it's more of a professional kind of us user, have you asked them to do a survey? Because they're, you know, they're probably enthusiastic. They would respond. Um, um, I don't, have, I don't really have um, the names of people because laws don't allow me to have such names. Uh, I know that many of the people who bought them are they bought them, bought it specifically because it was something by KDE and they are passionate about KDE. Well, some developers, you can see some people around here and, and people on the outside. I don't really know if I know 44 people, right? <laughs> so um, we don't really know all of, all of the people who, who bought it. But definitely, like, having more information is, is one of the things that KDE has to be doing for the next few years. Not only be, um, coming from the laptops we might have sold, but on all of the projects and products we want on our, ourselves, right? We need to know more about Plasma users. We need to know more about who buys slim books. We need to know more about contact users or KDE users. Um, are we going to see soon uh, some kind of blog post or report about the experience for, of uh, produ productizing KDE? Yes, yes. I, I've thought about uh, about. Um, Making a blog post, I, I probably want to do that, but I don't want to do it before I have, well, I have a conclusion, right? I think there are no more questions. Thanks, Alex, uh, for the talk uh, and for sharing the story of uh, Slimbook. It's very nice to hear that. Thank yeah. you. A big Thank applause. you, everyone.